Okay, so step one, we'll go up to the file menu, new. Make sure your tablet is first plugged in, and then we'll go up to file new. We'll create a brand new project, yes. Oh yes, let me give you a tablet, just one moment. File new, and we're gonna select the Air for Android. Very important that we select this one. Now here, you can either select it to be vertical or horizontal orientation for your project. I'm gonna keep the default. You can set your background color like we've done before. Did anyone else need a tablet or a pen tablet or Android tablet for this one? So make sure on the left side here, Air for Android. I'll keep it at 480 by 800. Actually, um, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do a horizontal project. So uh, with a, actually we have to flip those. We want a horizontal project, right? So the length, the width is is wider uh, than than the height. So we're gonna flip these around uh, 800 by 480, so we can do a landscape type of project. It gives you more area for you to tap on and such. So switch that over to 800 by 480. Background color, remember I like to put the gray color there just so that I can see the, the, uh, the background different from anything else that might be white. Frame rate, leave, you can leave that at 24 actually. And uh, pixels, so that's what you need there. On the left side, air for Android. I'll click OK on that, and I'm going to save this project onto my flash drive. You should create a new folder with your last name, Topic 3. Hey, you, you can call it whatever you want, but this is our third project, so I would recommend your last name, Topic 3. And then you can also save the FLA file with your last name, topic three, any name that you want really, but uh, something to keep track of it. Now, because we're getting to a more complex aspect of ActionScript of the class, we're going to use ActionScript, and it's a programming language that if you don't have experience in, it can be very tricky. So what I do is not only am I going to record the lectures, I'm also going to put my copy of the day's work into the network folder in case you need to compare your code with my code. Obviously, I'll help you out if something's going on. I'll help you during lab time and such. But sometimes it just helps to look at my code and compare with your code and, oh, I missed a period right here. So then you fix it like that. Um, so I'll be giving you a copy of my code at the end of the day. And that means I'm, I'm actually going to put the, the date on mine just so that you know which version of the code it is. That's optional for you. Um, let's just draw a happy face, just something, so that I can, I want to do again the practice about putting this onto a device. So I just want to be able to see something when I actually publish it to the device. Just draw whatever. We are going to do a real like uh, opening intro screen plus help screen and so forth. But uh, just go ahead and draw something. We need to do the steps to have Adobe Animate synchronize with your tablet. So we'll do all of that from the File menu, Android Settings. Let's go to File, Air for Android Settings. Let's look at these screens a little bit deeper now compared to last time. 
output file is just what's the name of your file that it'll eventually be compiled that will be created. Uh, Android files end in .apk. You may have seen other sorts of apps or software like an exe file. That's an executable file, but that's an exe. That's a, that's a file that runs on your computer. This is a file that's going to run on an Android. Uh, device. And later on when we do the iPhone ones, it'll have a dot something else. I think it's dot app or something. We have here app name. Well, this is what's going to appear right below your icon. And right now, I don't, I don't like what that actually looks like. I want it to say something like, you know, Tap Frenzy or Johnny's Adventure, like whatever the name of my app is going to be. You can change that right now. So let's, I'm going to call mine Tap Frenzy. You can call it whatever. You can use capitals, you can use spaces. That's the name of your app that's going to appear below the icon. Okay, so that's the name of our app. This app ID, it's optional. You don't have to do anything here. This is just a unique identifier internally about your particular app. Okay, that's just informational. Over here, you've got version. So this is where you would write that this is version 1 of the app or version 2 or 12 or whatever. So we're working with version 1. That's fine. Version label, just put number 1 there as well. That's another way to keep track of what version of the app that you have. There you could put like the date if you want. You know, you could put it instead 2019-07-03. Just these are internal things to kind of keep track of your project. I like to do it this way in terms of putting the date there so I can then confirm what version of the project am I working on. My particular app, I want it to be landscape on my actual tablet so oh look at that it says aspect ratio portrait which is vertical I don't want that I want my app because I changed my settings of my of my canvas to be landscape make sure you change that aspect ratio also to landscape you can decide if you want full screen mode or not and what that does is it just hides the other stuff like your battery level and the time and all of that you know when you have your device you have that extra little bar at the top if you want to get every little pixel on the device you can turn on full screen if you want or you can leave it that people can still see the time and stuff Auto orientation is if I've programmed my, my app to work well uh, vertically or horizontally, I do want it to be able to rotate. I'm programming mine that it's going to stay landscape. I want it to be only landscape, so I won't turn that on. If you want it to flip between the two, you can turn that on as well as auto, but I would recommend keep it landscape and then leave it like that. These other things here, don't worry about them. How do we render a processor? Don't worry about that and these files. So the only thing you really, really needed to change was the name of your app. 
and let, or if you don't, it's just gonna have the name of your file, which might look, might not look very nice. We'll go up to languages, set your language, permissions, turn on internet. That basically means if your app needs to access the internet, it can. Maybe we want to download extra maps or whatever. Plus when we debug it, uh, it just basically says, if you're going to debug it, please turn that on. So we'll just turn it on. Icons. Later on, you'll need to make some of these, and we'll talk about it again later, but later on you're going to need to provide these six different sizes of icons. And basically, eventually when we do that, in your project folder, let me see, where's my project? In your project folder, eventually you're going to uh, provide here, you're going to design in Photoshop or Adobe Animate, you're going to design six icons or Illustrator or whatever, you're going to design six icons and put them into your folder. And you see here from this icon screen, it says, okay, let's select your icon for the one of the size 144. And then select the one of 36 and 48. So this is not too complicated, but we can't do it just yet. But later on, you're going to draw some icons. They can be stick figures, sure. And then you're going to select to uh, attach the particular graphic for the particular size. Deployment. Down at the bottom here, make sure you've selected the install it to the device, launch it, and then also which device. And uh, when you turn on one of those, you may get a pop-up on the tablet that says, would you like to allow it? Say yes, but also turn on the little check mark that says, uh, remember my choice, or whatever it says, so that it doesn't keep asking you. And then at the top here, uh, we will now create the certificate for real. Last time I said, well, let's create a certificate and we'll just put AAA into everything. Let's do this for real now because we want to create a real file that is our uh, credential that we're a programmer for this app. Question? Uh, it's not turning on it and it's connected to the computer. Okay, I'll be there one moment. Let me just show this. So let's do this. Let's do create. Fill out all of these items here. Put your, put your name or your uh, pseudonym or whatever. Organization name is the name of your company. Congratulations, you are a programmer, you're an app developer. You don't have to go through any special hoops to be able to apply to be a programmer or a developer. So right now, you can make up the name of your company that makes these games, and your organizational unit is just the fancy name for your, like, your job title. So you can put their programmer or CEO or whatever you want. Make up a real password. You can leave the validity alone and then browse to save this file. So fill all of that in correctly, and then click OK to save the file, and then we'll use it. All right. Oh, it was, yeah. All right. It's OK. Now, one thing about this certificate file, this is a special kind of file. Remember, we said it was a P12 file. It's encrypted. That means that if you misspell your name here, you will not be able to get back to this screen to fix this. It's basically we create the certificate, we create it correctly, and it's locked. Because if it was easy to change these certificates, anyone can change a certificate to claim that that game is your game, or your game is their game. So make sure you type this in correctly, and there's, re there's, real, there's really no way uh, to fix it later. You can create as many of them as you want, but you should set it up properly in the beginning. So I'm just going to save the file in the same folder as my project. You don't have to change the name of the file. You need something like that. So your name, what job title you want, what's the name of your company. Um, you can make it up. It can be real or not. Country, password, and then you save it. You browse to save it somewhere and then click OK. So once you click OK on that, it'll think about it for a moment, and then it'll save this file. And then at the top, 
set your password and remember and then publish so when we continue to work on this project in the coming lectures you will not need to create your project brand new you will not need to set all of those settings again you will however need to browse to select the certificate the p12 file and put your password and we'll do it together again to get in the habit of that but it'll be something that we do over and over that we need to do every time we come in here because these computers have deep freeze whenever you turn them off it forgets what you did so we'll have to re we'll have to have your computer re remember that you have that credential so click publish on that and if you see the face appear on your device you've done it right if you didn't let's confirm it works and then we'll go on All right, so if you got your game to appear, if you got your quote game to appear so far, uh, you're on, on a good track here. Let's, okay, everyone, let's uh, get ready to go now. Um, so if we start to set this up a little bit more properly, I'm going to click OK and go, come back here. We're going to need various scenes for our game, so for us to be able to go to different parts of our game. So this face that I drew, I'm just going to delete it, or whatever you did, if you want to keep it, fine. But let's say this is going to be the title screen of my app. And I'm going to refine this later. Again, uh, you don't have to get very, very complex just yet at the beginning. You'll, you'll fall behind because the important stuff is the programming aspect. So I'm just going to say um, this is the Tap Frenzy game. Uh, and then I'm going to have two buttons, two totally simple looking buttons here for play and one for help. You'll be able to draw your buttons better later. You'll be able to um, do all of this detail later. I want a cool music to play in the background and I want fun, fun animation. Don't worry about that yet. Let's just create some sort of like intro first welcome screen here. And then we'll open up our Scenes panel. We're going to need a 
welcome scene, a help scene, a wave one scene, a boss scene, good ending, bad ending. Six scenes in total. So let's rename scene one. I like calling them like this. SC welcome, SC for scene. Um, these can be called anything you want, but when we do the programming, we need to be able to say go to scene and then whatever you call your scene. And in programming, it's very common when you name things, instance names and such, to not have spaces between your words. Uh, that could cause trouble later. So if you called it sp with a space there, that might be a problem, so I, I would avoid spaces. What's also common is if you have multiple words, you can have it all lowercase if you want. That'll work fine. But it's common to have a capital letter for a different, uh, for a different word so you can be able to read it. Or you can also put underscores. So however you want to call it. I'm going to call it SC welcome question question okay so sc welcome i'll create a new scene call it sc help create a new scene s C wave one. You'll have a minimum requirement of at least one wave of enemies, at least one boss. If you have the the time for it and such, you can put multiple waves, multiple enemies, all that good stuff. But there'll be a minimum baseline level to do. Uh, what was the other thing I said I also wanted in this? Boss. SC boss. And you will either win or lose. So two more scenes. We'll say SC good ending, SC bad ending. So these scene names are very important because when we write our code, go to scene X, well that's the name of the scene, we'll be able to go to a particular scene. We can have stuff happening like there's a timer. When the timer runs out, automatically move me to the boss. When all my life points go down, it goes to SC bad ending. So the spelling will definitely matter. And don't be discouraged when you get errors and it doesn't work. That's very, very common. If you're not a programmer, if you've never looked at any programming language, this is honestly a culture shock. This is like going to be totally different than what you're used to. And programming oftentimes is not forgiving. It is unfortunately that way. If you did not type it right, it's not going to work. This reminds us that computers are dumb because we need to program them exactly to know what we want. So when you're getting these errors, you'll get a pop-up at the bottom that will try to tell you, go look at line 12. And I realized, oh, I put SC bad ending, but I named it here with a capital E. But in my code, I wrote lowercase e. So it didn't work. These things have to match up. And we, we will have this, uh, we'll have these issues where it doesn't work and you know, we'll help each other out. You can help each other out, of course. Uh, do it at a reasonable volume, however. Don't distract your neighbors or me. Or raise your hand, I'll help you out, of course. And again, I'm going to put my version of the code at the end of the day into the network folder so you can compare. These scenes are a little bit barren, so over on help, scene. Again, I'll fill this in in better detail later. But I'll give some quick help. Tap things to win. You know, I can have a cool scrolling animation and amazing music that'll set the scene and all of that. Just something there, and then some sort of button to go back to the previous scene. Obviously, these buttons won't do anything yet. They need to be programmed. But we're going to set up the basic assets and attributes of the project. And maybe I want to do something cool, like some things give you plus points, and some things are minus points, and some things have a multiplier, 
and because of the uh, because of the phases of the moon, something else happens. You know, all of this, all of these games, all of these apps, they have to be programmed. There has to be some sort of code that does what it needs to do, and we'll be able to look into the various code snippets and original code to put things together to make it do what we need. Wave one, I'm going to draw a little creature that I need to, to what's the nice way to say it, put to sleep um, as we play the, the game here. So just something. We'll make it more complex later on. This will be, I don't know, some little thing with evil teeth. So again, we don't need to get too complex just yet, but some basic sprite. Don't worry about turning it to a symbol just yet. We're just putting stuff in our our various scenes so that then we can start to build the code. The most basic code will be to move from scene to scene. Okay, I'll draw some sort of simple temporary boss character in the boss scene. You'll have some time later on, of course, to fill in all of your details. But the idea that I was showing you from people's games, you'll be various things running around the screen. You'll tap them to get points or lose points. You'll have a timer, so you'll have X amount of time for people to be able to get enough points during a wave. And then we'll get to a boss. The boss will be have a certain number of hit points it will be coming at the person. Either within the time limit they defeated the boss hitting the hit points, good ending, or the time li limit runs out, they didn't get enough hit points in, bad ending. Then they can choose to play again uh, to increase their high score and such, or quit. Good ending. So over on the good ending, just a quick message about you win, play again, or quit. And there'll be a button play, there'll be a button quit. Now all of this temporary stuff that we're adding here, of course, is going to be based on what your, uh, what your original, you know, design was for, for your movie and stuff your project. You don't have to do it very complex at the moment, but later on this game should represent the, the continuation of project one and two. The model sheet going into the movie, going into one of the games, and then I'll also then talk about the fourth game, continuing your character. And then bad ending. Bad ending will be very similar, and actually I'm going to do a little shortcut here. I'm going to copy everything that I've drawn in this scene. I'm going to copy it, and then into bad ending, paste it, and just change it a little bit. You lost. And then a sad face. So you can redraw it if you want, or just copy it, and then onto the next scene, right-click, paste in place, and then just change it a little bit. So 
take a moment to do that, put some content in each of those scenes. We've got six scenes. Okay, so once you've got something in each of those scenes, I want to see this on my tablet. Uh, what I recommend is you want to press home on the tablet to, to exit the app, uh, the currently loaded thing, just so that I know that I'm loading the latest version. And remember, two ways to test, or three ways to test this. If I go to File, Settings, and Publish, that's one way. If I go up to Debug, Debug Movie into a uh, simulator or debug debug movie to a device. Usually what I'll do is debug to debug movie to a device. That way I can have it give me my um, my output, which actually I think it's gonna complain that there's no action script, so yep, okay. Fine. We'll add action script in a moment. Let's do the other publish. The other method, publish. I'll publish it there. So debug will not let you debug because there's no code to debug. We haven't gotten there yet. Fine. Let's publish it and let's just see our project on our device. Question. All right, so here's what you might get so far. Whoops. Well, again, this reminds us computers are dumb. I would have expected it to stay paused on my welcome screen so I can actually interact. But nope, we didn't program it to do that. So it does exactly what the default is, is to play frame one, scene one, when that ends, then frame one, scene two, when that ends, frame one, scene three, Right? Scene one, two, three in that order. And that's what it's doing here. It's playing every single scene. So, okay, gonna close that, close that, and close this before I get a seizure. So, close that. We need to have these scenes stop. We don't want them to be playing over and over. We're gonna start to introduce some action script here. So we need a we need a layer for action script. We'll go back to our scene one. Sometimes I'll call it scene one or scene three, but obviously scene welcome, scene boss, etc. Let's go back to scene welcome. Let's make a new layer. We'll call it actions, capital A. So in this new layer, actions, we want to right click and select actions. We'll use some code snippets here and there, definitely. Uh, but we'll, we're going to add our basic stop commands so that our movie does not loop over and over. So we'll go to Actions. Actually, what we'll do first, this is very common to do, to add a little block that is sort of informational about what your project is. This is a comment. So we'll do the slash asterisk and then asterisk slash. And we have these four fields. Your name, the date, what project this is, and a description. Actually, there's also oftentimes version. So 
So obviously your information here today is the third project tap frenzy version 1.00 in description a fast paced uh, tapping game to get the high score you can type whatever you want here or as simple or detailed as you want but this is just a little message this is kind of like a little copyright message that this is your work your project and so forth you can put more stuff here like you can put your email address into it you can put the message copyright whatever I'm just putting a quick block of of comment up here to take credit for your work the other way to write a comment is also double slash the difference is that whenever you have the double slash only that line is a comment if I go to the next line it's no longer a comment it expects it to be real code so sometimes it's useful to write slash asterisk and then asterisk slash and everything in between is a comment and sometimes it's useful to just do double slash and then write one line of comment because I want to do here prevent the project from looping this is the comment that explains what the code will do because sometimes the code is not very human readable it looks very you know programmy it looks very technical but if I comment the code and explain it in a human readable way I will know that stop what what that is doing because we have a way to stop sound a way to stop action we have different things that we can do so what we're doing here is preventing the project from looping I need to do something similar in help scene. On the help scene, I'll go to help scene, I'll create a new layer called actions. I'll add just the command stop. I might not need to do the rest. We're saving some effort. So I'll go to, I'll go to help, make a new layer, add the stop action. So SC help new layer actions and all I'm all I'll put is just stop so that every single scene doesn't just loop infinitely okay this is where we see that sometimes programming is tedious because now do the same thing please for the next four go to each other scene add the frame add the command there might be a shortcut to do that but anyway add that to all of your scenes now so oftentimes I'm going to show the long way to do things and then I'll show a shortcut so go to all of your scenes and you'll eventually see that on the left side everywhere that you've got a scene that has been named and everywhere that there is an actions layer it'll show them to you here so this is a way to jump between scenes really fast as well let's add the stop command to every scene frame one at the beginning of the scene.
So we need the stop, stop action, the stop command, and all of the scenes. And then now when I uh, publish it, it should no longer loop. So publish it to see it on the device. And uh, you should see that it gets, that it gets stopped on the... Um, on the SC welcome. You, you should be able to at this point also go over to debug. Uh, one thing about when you do it via debug, you, this will pause here until you click OK on that. If you do regular publish, you'll see it. But if you debug it to the device, it'll keep waiting until you click on that. And if you don't click on that in time, it crashes here. So um, just remember to click on that. And nothing happens yet. I haven't programmed these buttons. But I have my stop command that it doesn't loop. So that's a victory. And again, to remind you, if I go up to debug, debug movie on device, go to the device, it will um, it will pause and crash if you don't click OK on the screen. So even if I've got my tablet vertical like this, Eventually, when it publishes, so I gotta click OK on that. Um, when it eventually gets on the device, since I've locked it as landscape, well, obviously, my project is landscape. If you go the, through the debug route, then you have to go to debug end debug session. Or if I go to debug, debug movie as the mobile simulator, that's the default. If I go into the mobile simulator, I think that's often the fastest way to test it. It has to process it less. See, it comes out up a lot faster. The, the catch here, however, is when we want to actually click things, we have to activate on the left side over here, touch gesture, and turn on touch layer. And then we get this little finger that we can tap on. And I'll show this again as we go on. There's a lot of details. When you become a, you know, a developer, there's, there's the software that you have to learn, the various buttons, there's a workflow, etc. Once you do it a few times, it becomes second nature because there's also keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and debug session is Alt F12 on the keyboard. Real programmers, they memorize these keyboard shortcuts. And it may take years, that's fine. But I would say try to memorize as many of these shortcuts as possible instead of moving your hand again to the mouse and then moving it again and click again and moving again. That's called carpal tunnel syndrome there, moving your hands, repetitive stress in, uh, injury. When you're on your, your hands are on the keyboard and you move to the mouse and you move back and you move back and you move back, that's where injury happens. If your hands are already on the keyboard and I memorize control shift enter, I can do the debug right away instead of moving my hand to it. Alt F12. starts the debug. So did everyone get that? Are you seeing your project on the device and it's not looping infinitely? It's right here. Okay, so We've, we, we're going to have this actions panel which you can kind of move around and you can move it so that it gets attached to various parts of the screen if you want. See if you move it to a certain edge it'll want to attach itself there uh, or on the right side. So for me because my screen's a little smaller probably what I'll often do is I'll close the panel temporarily so you can double click the actions panel to get it out of the way. You can close it completely and then just bring it back every time. Right-click Actions. You can also collapse it over here into a little icon. There's a lot of ways here. 
Um, you guys have big monitors there, so that's that's useful. You'll be able to move things around and have space. And um, just closing that and opening it. Uh, I want to go back to scene welcome and uh, make a couple of these buttons work. I want to be able to click the help button and go to the help screen. So anything that I'm going to interact with, if I'm tapping the little sprites to get points, or if I'm moving around various scenes, or later on when we do our other game, picking up items and stuff, we need to have them be symbols, and they need to have instance names. So let's set up this help, this help uh, graphic. Let's turn the help graphic into a symbol. So you want to select that symbol, right click, convert to symbol, or F8. Call this BTN help. It's a movie clip. We could call it MC help. That's fine. But I want to see, like when I've got a list of all of my stuff in the library, I will be able to quickly see that, okay, this type of movie is a little more special one. It's a button. It's going to do something. So BTN help. When we do like those little creatures running around, I could call it MC creature or I could call it, you know, sprite creature one. You can call these things whatever you want that makes sense, as long as you're using these names consistently. So BTN help, click OK. When we practiced this last time moving the face around, we did two things. One of them was to convert it into a symbol. What was the second thing we did in order for the code to work? That was the third thing. What was the second thing? Order and action script? That was the third thing. There's one more thing. Before, between this symbol being able to add action script to it, we had to uniquely oh, identify it. Instance, instance name, oh, yep, okay. the name of it. So, second step. First step, I guess, step zero, drop it. Step one, turn it into a symbol. Step two, give it an instance name. Step three, write the action script. So make sure you've selected that little button. Make sure it's highlighted, make sure it's selected. And then up on the instance name property, we'll call it here help. Can it be the same name as like button help? It could be, yes, but uh, traditionally programming in ActionScript, you have the, the type of thing that it is first in the library. And then when you add code to it, you have the thing that it is second. Okay. So you could call it the same thing, uh, but usually we reverse it and very important here you type it you then press enter make sure you've entered that new name okay so here's where we can actually we can write the code manually or we can do a code snippet here's where we can have it write for us a way to move from screen to screen Let's go up to the code snippets panel here. It has its own window also, doesn't it? Window code snippets. Yes, up there under actions. Actions, code snippets, yep. So anyway, we get to it. Let's open up the code snippets. Oh, there it is. Okay, so under mobile, mobile action, mobile actions, we have uh, not actually not swipe. Uh, we want a click. Where is the click? Uh, I think we're fine if we do the regular. Tap. Uh, I'll confirm in a moment. Let's. Let's do the regular timeline navigation. Click, go to, go to and play, go to scene. Yeah, let's do that one. I believe it should work. If not, we'll fix it. 
but make sure you've selected your help symbol make sure it has an instance name if you, if you don't put an instance name it will actually make one for you but it'll do something very generic like btn001 which might not be too useful and then we'll select the go to click to go to scene and play so double click that one and so the code goes here So the code, the code is saying right here, line 19, there is something called an event listener, that, which will see these things as we go on. Listen for an event. We have various types of events. A click, a drag, a two-finger tap. We have the event of, what about pressing the power or volume button? So programming languages often rely on these things called events on the event of something happening, do something. So this is saying if you click or if you tap on this thing, we then run a function. We run a series of steps. There's a function here. It's a series of steps. Steps. Click to go to scene. Well, that is defined. Well, what does that actually mean? What does it do? That's defined here on the next line. There's a code that says, let's define a function. Let's define what does it mean when you click on, when you run this code. After the event, we're listening for, we're waiting for a click on this button. After that happens, comma, run a function. This function means right here. We're going to go to and play frame one, scene three. I don't have any scene called scene three. I have a scene called SC help. So that should make sense that we need to change that little piece of the code because it doesn't fully know what we want. It wrote a lot of it for us, the important stuff about wait for a click, then do something. But the further do something, go to frame one, scene X, scene help. So change it inside of the quotes, leave the quotes, but then change the name of the scene, obviously, to SC help. Exactly is how you typed it when you named it. And it would make sense that it says, go to scene one of the help scene. I could, if I have different things happening on different frames, I could then change it here. Go to frame, go to frame five of that scene. There's nothing on frame five. That'll be an error. But I can jump to different parts in the timeline this code here says go to somewhere frame one scene SC help so let's publish it and see how that works so we'll go back to the Android settings here we'll do our publish
Okay, so hopefully it worked. Uh, it popped up for me, and then I pressed the button, and then I went to SC Help. Great. And then I press this, and nothing happens. Computers are dumb. I haven't told it to do anything on this scene, obviously. And what you might have also seen, that if you didn't tap your button exactly in the right place, it might not have registered. We technically drew our buttons hollow. We didn't fill in the colors completely. Technically, the only places that you can tap are where we've got actual drawings because this is invisible when you see the background. So if your finger happens to be hitting here, it won't work because our button is this. So later on, I can fill in the color properly so that anywhere that I click on the button will work. And these are these little details that, well, when I play someone else's game, it, it just works and all of that. Well, we have to now be in charge of every detail. If I don't remember to fill in the color of my button, there's going to be hollow points in there that cannot be clicked on. That'll be something we get back to. More importantly, when I get to help, I'm stuck. I have a button that seems to go back, but it doesn't do anything. So I need to write, I need to do the same steps basically that we did for the first button to go back. When we did it here on welcome, we drew the button, turned it into a symbol, gave it an instance name, added the code. Okay, four steps um, that we will do several times because we want this navigation to go throughout the project. So scene help. I'm going to select this arrow. F8 to turn it into a symbol and we'll call it BTN arrow back. These names as you get more complex into your projects, it's perfectly fine that they're like 20 characters long, especially if they're descriptive. One thing that helps you in programming is to be descriptive. I could have just called it arrow, and that would work just fine. But which arrow? The one that goes back? The one that exits the game? The one that is my, uh, my boss enemy? So all of these instance and symbol names are very important and just be verbose just be wordy about it be detailed so i might have others later on i might have arrow up see i'm, I'm writing these in a way that will make sense it's some kind of button it's the arrow graphic and it's the one that's up this one is obviously back Okay, then this needs an instance name. This needs a unique identifier because I might use that arrow in multiple places. And so up here, arrow back BTN. This is getting a little bit of a, ahead of ourselves, but like I said a moment ago, we may use this arrow more than one, in more than one place. Uh, these instance names can only be applied to one unique thing throughout the whole project. But wait a minute, I want to use this arrow in seven places in my app. That means I can only use this name once? Yes. But the way around that is perhaps I call it arrow back zero one or arrow back, you know, help. This instance name must be unique to everyone that's on, on the screen. But all the instances that are on the screen come back from one in the library. In the library, they are all coming from BTN Arrow, and that's fine. I don't need seven different ones in the library, but I do need seven different versions of the name for each different instance. So if you call the arrow back help BTN, that would be a little better because this is an arrow that goes back in the help screen, which is a button. 
That's the logic of that. If we leave it just arrow back BTN, that's fine, it'll work. But then later on, when we have a back arrow elsewhere, we cannot use the same name, arrow back BTN. So I would say call this one arrow back help BTN. And remember to press Enter. Okay, then we need to do the same sort of thing about a code snippet that will help us move to a certain place. Make sure um, your object is selected. We'll go back to code snippets. We'll use the same code snippet, go to scene and play. It added the code to this new scene. Eventually, I'm going, to, I'm going to get tired of having this extra commentary here. You can delete it later. But notice what happens here. Uh, it knows if you've got it selected, it knows the name of what you called it. So we've got some object on the screen. We've, we're adding an event listener. We're waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for an event. The event is a click. Run a function. Notice this is go to scene two. So again, these. These are unique because back on scene one, welcome, I had a button that went somewhere. I had a click to go to scene button, but that button went to a specific scene. That code is not the same exactly here because it's a different scene with a different button, so it added a two for us automatically. And the full definition of what does that actually do, defined right here, this function named whatever, goes to and plays scene one, I mean frame one, x scene. So obviously we fix that. What do we put there instead of scene three? Scene welcome. Scene welcome, sc welcome, yeah. So wherever we're trying to take it to go to, sc welcome. Whatever you call your scenes, of course. If you choose to call them different things, that's totally fine. When I do these programming classes, I recommend that you name things how I'm naming them, because then when we check our code, you might forget, oh, you called it one thing, I called it another, code conflicts. You can use your own names of these things where necessary, where appropriate, but you'll have to keep track of how you name your instances and so forth. I will save it. So you want to write your code, save your code, test your code. This time I'll go to debug, debug movie on a device. It's all similar, right? Just want to do it this way instead. You'll figure out the way you like a little better. If you go through the debug screen, however, you have to remember to click the OK. Or maybe I want to debug it on the simulator, on that little mobile thing. So click OK on that. Maybe I want to do it that way. That's, that way seems to be a little faster than waiting for it to go to a real device, although it's better on a real device. So if I put my, if I try to tap right here, and then I'm on the help screen, cool, tap things to win. Okay, I can do that. And then I tap on the arrow, it goes back home. So this is what, a, this, is, this is a lot about what happens in programming. Repetition. We've done together two button interactions. Um, I would like you to do the third one. You now try to do what we did twice together. You make the play button go to wave one. Take a moment to try to do that on your own. I might not walk you through every single step every time. I walk you usually enough Together we do things enough times that hopefully you want to do try to do it on your own because when you try to do this at home, I'm not going to be right there to help you right away. But if you try to go back to what you've learned in the lecture or replay the lectures, hopefully that gives you that little extra push to be able to do it. So, so do that. Make the play button work so that it goes to SC Wave 1. Once you got that working, call me over.
that one work, now make the play button work so that it goes over to wave one. It's basically the same thing we just did together twice, now you do it for the third button. So when you get your button to work to go to the wave one, call me over so I can check it out.
Just help and play. All right, so uh, if you didn't quite get a chance to show me, I'll look at it in a moment. But you see, that's the idea that sometimes you, it's repetition. I learned about how to set up a, uh, a button, because I can see there's a button and I'm going to click on it, but clicking on it is several steps. You draw it, you symbolize it, you give it an instance name, and then you give it the code. Well, when we get to the creatures and such, our sprites, these sprites will need to be turned into symbol, symbols eventually. I'll have multiple copies. Maybe one is red, maybe one is yellow, one is big, one is small. Okay, we'll have different um, copies of the different symbols. I don't have to stick with one. I could draw seven different ones. All of those will need an instance name. If I've got 10 things on the screen to tap, well, each of them needs an instance name. Sprite 1, Sprite 2, Sprite 3. Um, we want them to run around and do stuff. And then I want to tap on them to get points. Okay, so that's another concept we have not gotten to yet, variables, keeping track of points. But what I want to do at this point is, if you got it to work up to this point, I want to end the lecture at this point, so maybe give you a little bit of time to start working on a little bit of the graphics. This project that we started with, we're going to build upon it next time. So you might want to start to work a little bit on the design of things. When we come back next time, we'll do more of the coding. And like I said, I will usually always put my code, my copy of the code, I'll usually put it into the network folder, just so that you can compare your code if you need to. And the way I will do that is I'll just put a copy of the name of the folder with the date. into the CIS 126 folder. I'm putting a copy of my code in there. So whenever you want to compare, sometimes it helps to look at my code at the same time as yours. Um, but I'm putting my code in there. And if you got it to work, great. If you haven't had a chance to show me your buttons working, show me before you leave. And then you can start to draw the graphics a little bit. Or if not, if you want to do it at home, that's fine too. But that's it for the lecture for the moment. When we come back next time, we'll work more on our project, on our coding.